Hey everyone, my name is Cygnus, and welcome back to Create Astral. So, in the last episode, we cleared out a big space, and today we're actually going to put something there. We're going to be putting a pretty sizable warehouse, I'd say. Now, it's not the biggest I've ever built in my whole Minecraft career, but it is going to be pretty large, and more importantly, it's going to be scalable, which means that we can extend it up or we can extend it down depending on the needs that we currently have. Now, before we do that, I did want to demonstrate for you guys my process for handling food. So as you know, I set this up two episodes ago and it's just been running, passively creating a good chunk of food. And currently, not a whole lot in there. I've been feeding these guys and I also moved some of the food into the actual house. So I have in here a bunch of my seeds, and then up here is a bunch of my processed, my processed stuff. And then in here, I just have things that have already been cooked. But I've been using this cutting board to prepare food. So the way this works, if you're not too familiar with Farmer's Delight, is you take something like uncooked steak or fish, and you put it in your offhand. So typically that's by pressing F, or you can just drop it into this little option right here. Either or works. And then you just cycle right click. So I'll show you how to do that with just cabbage. So I put the cabbage in my right hand, hold the tin knife, and then I just hold right click and it quickly cycles through. Now this is something that can be automated and I'll be doing that later. But at the moment, I don't need to really automate it. I'm perfectly fine doing what I'm currently doing. Now, as for the bread, making bread with just wheat is inefficient. So I drop it into the wheel here. I already moved the lava, I have it in a bucket right here, and I'm going to clean it or wash it with water. So I put it there and it's going to start turning that into dough. Once all that's turned into dough, then I can start cooking it. Now ideally I would have a couple of these set up all doing similar tasks, but at the moment I just have this one. I'll probably set up a couple more later on. But this is how I've been making food, and once this gets all washed up, it'll turn into the dough I need and then I can cook that and then I can make hamburgers using bread, which is infinitely more efficient than just eating raw onions and tomatoes, which is what I was doing for a little bit until my food situation got sorted out. But eventually I would like to automate this. So we now have the dough, but I would like to automate this process and make it much more efficient and just have everything I need pulled from this and made automatically. So I can go ahead and drop this in there and that's going to cook and it's not that fast. It would be faster if I hooked it up to a smoker or even just use that with a campfire right there. But for now, this is perfectly acceptable for what I need. So you see, it's going to make that. And that was actually from not a whole lot of wheat that has so far been processed in the millstone. It's, it's actually not spinning nearly as fast as I want it, but that's something we'll solve when we have the proper factory. The idea I have for the factory is going to be pretty big. And you can actually see I did extend the left side and the right side just a little bit to give me a bit more space. I replace the ground with grass in case I want to do anything with that, but mostly it's going to be elevated. I'm actually gonna bring the whole thing up about one or two blocks. So you have to sort of walk up a staircase to get into the warehouse. It is gonna be a lot and there's definitely going to be a few hurdles I'm gonna run into along the way. And my biggest concern is running out of resources because this is hands down the biggest thing that I have built in a let's play so far. And I'm hoping I won't, uh, I haven't overstretched myself, but we're going to find out and hopefully it's not going to be too tough. So the main resources I'm going to need are stone bricks, birch logs, oak logs. I may use some dark oak and weirdly enough, polished diorite. And I'm looking at you from outside the window right now. Yeah, I'm going to be using polished diorite. I think it's diorite. It's the white, yeah, diorite. So I'm going to be using polished diorite for the interior floor. And given that the interior floor is going to cover pretty much this entire space, I'm going to need a lot of it. But fortunately, I do have a little mine. And with the help of some drills and simple windmill systems, I can actually set up a pretty efficient little mining hallway down here. And I thought I would get more diorite going down that way. But nope, this is pretty much just it right here. And I can actually very fortunately use the ore vein uh, or the uh, vein hammer that I have here to just break up all of it at once without breaking any of the surrounding stone. Which can be a little messy, but it definitely guarantees I'm only getting what I'm looking for. So I'll probably have to gather a lot of this before I'm able to do the exact build I want. And other than that, I will need to gather, I'm thinking a lot of logs. I'm definitely, it's gonna be a couple of stacks and I wanna use oak logs for the edge of it. So I'm gonna do pillars on the outside 
that are going to be two by two oak log pillars going up toward the roof and the roof is going to be a slow arch and i want to have an opening at the top a large opening at the bottom and i actually want to use some create to make the doors a bit more interesting and i'll probably get to that after i've built the main structure because it's not going to really mean much if i don't have a building around those neat little create structures but that's enough talking. I think it's time we finally build this. I've been talking about it for a few episodes now and it kind of feels like I've been putting it off. Well, anyways, I will see you all in a few minutes. Actually, before I go, I did just realize we are actually on day 100. If I check the F3 stats right here, it even says right up there, right next to local difficulty, day 100. Which means if this was a 100 days challenge, well, I've definitely succeeded because I'm doing pretty good and I'm not any closer to dying than I was day one. And it's not like I've just been playing super, super safe or anything. Like, I have gone out and done things. I've gotten into fights with monsters, but I'm not actively seeking out danger at every single turn. Honestly, that's what makes this so much easier for me. I understand the threats that are actually present in a hardcore world and I know how to minimize them and one of the biggest threats that people forget about is food. People run out of food and then starve and they forget that that's a thing that can happen in Minecraft because most people play on normal. Anyways, I've done enough stalling, it's about to be nighttime, so I'm gonna get this warehouse built, I'm gonna at least get the frame and I'll see you guys in a few minutes probably when I have a bit more progress done. Anyways, see you then! All right, after honestly way too long. I think that actually took me about an hour. I know it took me seven in-game days. So yeah, about an hour if I'm sleeping through nights, but here it is. This is the bulk of the warehouse. I still need to do a little bit of work to make it not so dark up top. And I have a little roof access for now, but this is where the majority of my automation is going to go. And I'm probably going to do it in like a little border ring for automating certain processes that kind of take up a lot of space, such as the thing that I have going on behind me. I want this to be like 10 times more efficient, and setting that up is first of all going to require a lot of energy, but more importantly is going to require me to just set up lava and set up a bunch of areas where it can just spray onto probably a conveyor belt of crushed material because I need to make my ore production a lot more efficient and I also need to start automating things like the production of andesite, the production of sand, the production of gravel, the production of everything that you can find in this little automation matrix because if I'm going to do anything efficiently, I have to do all of this because I'm going to need a lot of resources down the line. I need to make a cactus farm so I can print slime. I need to make a kelp farm, I need to get azurine and raw tin, rubber to make, or doing rubber trees to make rubber, I need to get uh, nether quartz processed by creating diorite, and which I do have a lot of diorite, but I don't have as much as I would like, but I think the first thing that needs to be done is I need to get a copious amount of lava, because lava can be turned into a lot of things, and well... I will be needing a hefty amount of it. And if you recall, from all the way back here, there is a method to obtain nigh infinite lava. Yeah, I think it's uh, not somewhere here. Yeah, here it is. So lava generation. So you can passively generate lava by putting dripstone underneath a block and then put a lava source block above the block with the point of dripstone. Then a few blocks below the dripstone, place a cauldron and the lava from the cauldron can then be pumped out into a fluid tank giving you a reserve of lava. So we're not actually going to do that specifically. So what we're going to do instead is try and aim 
for this, where I'm going to generate infinite lava, where if I just pump generated lava into a large lake, which will probably be in here, and I'm actually probably gonna do something cool where in the middle I have a 10 by 10 glass hole that I'm just pumping lava into, and we can just watch that process happen. And doing that is going to be expensive because I'm going to need a lot of iron to make a lot of cauldrons if I want it to be fast. And I'm also going to need to make the pumps and connect everything up and drill a giant hole to 100 blocks deep, which is very, very deep. So I, I would probably do like 101, 102, so I'm not pouring lava up until it starts to fill this area. But that is definitely on my list of things to do because I'm going to need a lot of lava in the future. It's... It's not like that stuff is cheap, but my priority right now is starting to make my way down this little route using fluid pipes. Also, we can automate gold, by the way, by combining deep slate, sand, and lava. But I think to do that, we're going to need to set up some mining operations, which means probably getting into setting up a railway that automatically mines underground because deep slate is really slow to mine and I need a lot of it and I don't want to manually do that but first and foremost the thing I should probably do the most is just set up a smeltery yep a proper actual smeltery using more than just this because this is slow and inefficient and I don't like that also I can't set up the doors yet because the mechanisms that I want to use for the doors require brass and I have to go to the moon to do anything with brass but first and foremost, I'm probably going to make some fluid tanks so I can move this thing in here and have that going much more efficiently. But first things first, I need to make it to where I can make andesite alloy without going broke. Because right now making andesite alloy is very expensive. It requires three nuggets, three clay, and three andesite every single time I want to make it. And I don't want to do that. So instead, we're going to start using something like this and a automated system to just put things in, andesite out, and make the andesite compound, which I will pull up. So instead of just making the andesite compound, we're just gonna skip straight to making the andesite alloy on a casting table. And how do we get that? Well, we need to make the compound mixture, and the compound mixture is made in a mixer, and then we can move it from the mixer into one of these, and then have it just always pouring out into that one and then always depositing out into a chest using conveyor belts because those do work with these, I believe. It's actually something worth checking. Does that work? First and foremost, we need to get this hooked up to a pipe and some, and a sort of power set up inside of the warehouse. So I think I'm gonna set up just a simple little windmill and I have the parts for it right in here and I'm missing some of the parts, okay. Let's run back inside and it will be dark soon so I will need to sleep because Monsters are scary, and my warehouse has a roof that lets in lets them in from the outside, and that's that's concerning. But let's go ahead and grab a gearbox and a stressometer, so we know how much we're working with, and we can go set this up. Need to turn this. And I don't have my. Oh, I do have my wrench. Okay, so uh, doop. that's wrong. And then we just set up a little windmill, which we don't even need to do anything super fancy. Actually, I want to do something super fancy though. So that's gonna bother me if I don't. So let's go grab some of our blocks. Should have some dark oak log. Yeah, that'll work. And just get a couple of those. One, two, three, four, five. Take some fall damage and then build this up. Mm-hmm. That is how I want it. That is not. Up, up, up. Yes, okay. I went all the way up. There we go. Keep going like this. Ooh, that, uh... Slightly concerned about that. Because it's touching. I don't think it should matter, though. Because I don't think sails can extend it. I suppose we can always find out. So, yep, okay, that's that's perfectly fine. You know what, I didn't, I meant to put it on the vertical gearbox and I didn't. We can just do this, break that, break that, vertical gearbox, windmill bearing, and then actually still just extend this downward. I don't think it cares too much. Yeah, that'll work. And then right click with the hand, there we go. Now it's spinning and it's creating rotational energy. 
and let's get a readout on how much that's actually making. So we have 2,047 stress units. This is a very obviously very low stress system. We're not uh, doing a whole lot with it, but let's go ahead and get some sleep and come back out and start prepping up our automated system. And we'll need to make some pipes, so that ought to be fun. We have a lot of copper. All right, we are awake and let's go make some pipes. So we're making fluid pipes because that's what we have to work with. Fluid pipes require rubber and copper sheets. So that means we need to squish a whole lot of these. And do we have rubber or do we need to start producing rubber again? I looks like we need to produce rubber. So there are some rubber trees out there and I think I have some rubber wood. Uh, so getting that shouldn't be too difficult. How do we make actual rubber again? So it's just sap inside one of these. So we should set up an automated rubber farm. I think actually we're going to set up an automated rubber farm using the sawmill utility that we can find over here. These little mechanical saws and some rubber saplings that can just constantly grow it. And then we just put everything in the, into there and output actual sap. So we put rubber logs into one of these and then out comes sap and the sap goes into the mixer and the mixer turns it into rubber. And voila, we are printing rubber incredibly quickly. But we'll have to set that up in the next episode and clear some space for that. But for now, let's see if we can make any pipes at all. And if not, I can go and grab some rubber trees and just turn those into rubber as soon as possible. Yeah, it looks like we definitely don't have any. So I'm going to start crunching some copper ingots into copper plates and go grab some rubber. So I will be right back. Okay, I have the rubber in the millstone and that's doing its thing. And it's not super efficient right now, so we should actually probably make that more efficient using the stuff we have in there. And I have this crunching out the copper into copper plates, which is what we need, I believe. Let's double check the fluid pipe, copper sheets. Yep, so we're making those. And so we're gonna come over here and we're actually going to start using this for something. So I need to set up a little thing that just lets me speed this up. And I don't wanna do the normal gear method. So let's do it if we can do Let's see if we can do a encase chain drive. So encase chain drive. All right, so I will need to use the good old fashioned method of turning cogs at in a specific pattern to increase the speed. Should have them in here. If I need to make some more large, I will. But fortunately for me, that's not too big of a deal because I do have quite a lot of everything right now, at least that's what it feels like, and as we get farther into this mod pack, because we're actually really not that far, so we're gonna see if we can speed this up, and I don't have any shafts, and that's gonna be a problem. Let's go grab the shafts. Don't clip that out of context. Okay, we have shafts, and I also grabbed some vertical gearbox, which we can turn into normal gearbox as we need. So let's go ahead and do this little mechanism. Where are we at with the stress? Oh, this is doing pretty good. I'd say. Let's go ahead and hook these things up so they're just more efficient and we're not having to wait so long. We want the millstone to automatically deposit into th this basin and create rubber. So we want to make the rubber in the basin. Doesn't require anything else. No heating, nothing. So we take millstone, which we attach a vertical. Then we should be able to do that. And I think that's spinning at an appropriate speed. And then we can, we'll need to set up a shaft to shaft, just like that. And we'll set up the belt and we found our belt and we'll grab the andesite funnels as well and shoots just in case we need them, probably won't. And let's take these over. We don't have a whole lot of belt, but we need to make more rubber to get that. So uh, kind of a catch 22 actually. This is turning into something entirely different than what I planned, mostly because it's a bit harder than I thought it would be. We actually have to drop this, and for aesthetic's sake, we should be able to just hook up a vertical like that, connect that, and shaft to properly shaped shaft. There we go. That was a bit of a pain. And we have that. So that's going to output. We need to get it turning the opposite direction. Oh, heck. There we go. That's actually going the right direction. And then we have the basin right here, which will go into, and then above it will be the mixer. So we'll set a block so we can place the mixer. And I think it just needs to be one block up. 
And then... Oh, we need to get it spinning the right direction. I mean, that works. It's not the most elegant solution, but hey. Actually, I can think of a more elegant solution. Just like that. So, we can probably just... First of all, let's deposit this onto there and see if it goes in. Okay, it's already making rubber. We can drop that in there. And that should start producing what we need. And this is just the start of the automation that we can have going here. Yeah, see? It's just going to start pumping that out. And then on the other side, we can have an output into a chest. So we'll just get this set up. Just a little short one. We actually want these to be the same direction. So we're going to connect those like that. And then we can set up a chest. I just need to grab one. Put that right there. And then we put the funnel... Right there. Oh, okay, that actually works a lot better than I planned for it to. Now we have automated rubber. All we need now is a rubber farm, which I can probably put out back there and have the little spinny doohickey farming everything and then dropping into a chest, which then drops everything into the millstone and then voila, rubber farm. Actually, I'm feeling good about this. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so to do this, we're going to need probably another windmill bearing just so we're efficient and we're not putting too much on a single system. Then from the windmill bearing, we will attach a mechanical bearing, probably just right next to it, honestly, or even... Honestly, I haven't tested if the windmill bearing can just have saws attached to it and if that will work, but I don't think it will. Uh, worst case scenario, we just run the connection from outside of here, out to there, and then onward. But first and foremost, I do need to re-set uh, up the little depot thing that I had and the mechanical press. So let's go ahead and get that set up real fast over... Let's just do it over here because we can very easily get this connected. And it's it doesn't need to be hooked up to any automation just yet. There we go. And we can hook that up. Now it's spinning in the right direction. And we need to... We're going to make about nine iron sheets. And then with those iron sheets... We will be making the actual mechanical saws, which require andesite casings, which fortunately we have plenty of those actually. Okay, those are already made because uh, this system is already 10 times more efficient than that. Well, probably not 10 times, but y you get what I'm saying. So let's go make this. And I should have all of the andesite casings, so I just need to make four of these to do what I want. So do a little bit of that. There we go, one, two, three, four. I think we still have a, no wait, we don't have a mechanical bearing. So we need to make a new mechanical bearing, which fortunately, incredibly cheap and stuff we have in our inventory, except for the slab. It's always the slab, isn't it? Anyways, there we go, mechanical bearing. I had a, but we have the mechanical bearing. We can set up where this is going to be and it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. It just has to work. That's our main focus here, is just making sure this works. So let's come over here and clear out a little space for this. We can set our rubber. And that is all of it. Okay, not too concerned about the leaves. Now the middle section is going to be... Let's actually see where we can build this. Okay, so if we go out this way... Oh, that's perfect. It just lets us go straight out here. And this is actually a good marker block already. So we can set up a vertical gearbox on top of a mechanical bearing. And then we just need to do a shaft line all the way over, which is not the most fun, but you know, it works. And we have a lot of resources already, or we have a lot of stress over here that we can use. We're not like starving for that. So we might as well just go ahead and use it, even if it's not the most elegant solution to the problem in front of us. So we'll go ahead and dig all of that out, take the shaft, run it all the way over, there we go, and now it's spinning. Okay, so we will just build that. Then from that, we should just be able to do chassis. We have radial chassis, but those tend to stick to everything around them. So let's use linear chassis instead and make a few more of those. Just logs and andesite alloy, which, well, we are not starved for andesite alloy, but let's clear inventory a little bit of some extra things we don't need right this second. Andesite alloy. And remember, all of this is just so we can make more andesite alloy more efficiently. And that's our linear chassis. And now we can go out and set this up. So we won't need to set it up 
on every single block of the row just because of how this is going to end up functioning. We should probably fill in that dirt path actually real quick before I do anything because I'm going to fall in it and I'm going to get stuck. And then I'm going to get decapitated by the um, by the buzz saws. And that's, that's not a good thing. Don't want to do that. Definitely not. Oh, and we need to set up a portable storage interface hooked up to this that will deposit it where we need it to go. And fortunately, we can make more belts if we need them because, well, we're making rubber right now, so we actually can't afford to. So we're going to build like this. Yeah, that, that should work. Now, which way does this actually spin when we turn it on? I need super glue. I completely forgot to grab super glue. All right, got my super glue and went ahead and made more belts. It is nighttime. I should probably sleep. Everything that can stop me from doing this is stopping me from doing this. Okay, let's go get this done because I really want to have this automation done. This is super, super important. And I don't want to save it for the next episode, even though I totally could. So this may end up being a really long episode on accident. Let's do this. And is it going to move the whole world? It is moving very fast in a very specific direction. And that works. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that is funny when it does. Ooh, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, whatever. Actually, don't even think it needs to be on that uh, first one. It can, ju can just be on the ends. And this is incredibly dangerous what I'm about to do, but I just have to make sure it works. And that's a good thing I did, because it doesn't. Glue those together, and then we'll have to attach a portable storage interface on the end here. And then I think it's going to line up over here. And then I don't even want to do, like... Hmm. So we can do a shaft from here, dig our way on over here, and let's see what we can do if I break in here. Where do we pop out? That's inconvenient, but might be manageable. Okay, so I have an idea, and it's not the most elegant solution, but it will work. So... We're going to use a funky little item that we haven't actually touched yet before, and to do it, it's going to be sprayed with water there. I do need a gold plate, which I think I actually have. Uh, nope, but I have gold. So I can just go make the gold plate, I suppose. But the item I'm going to be making is called an ejector, and uh, it does exactly what it sounds like it does. And I'm going to have it going from here, over to here, and then into the millstone, and it's just going to throw rubber, or rubber wood rather, just into the millstone exactly where we need it. So let's go ahead and get this flattened. There we go. And then we can go craft what we need. Now the weighted ejector requires a cog wheel, depot, and a cog wheel, depot, and gold sheet. Mispronounced cog wheel. I don't know how I did that, but we should have everything in our inventory actually. So we can go ahead and make this. And this works in a little bit of a weird way. So we'll have to set everything up in advance before we can actually get anything going. And I think we may actually need to make another andesite funnel. So, it comes out to here. So we would do the shortest belt imaginable. Need it turning the right direction. I'm trying to see where I can get that rotation, actually. Oop, that's not good. It's also spinning the wrong direction. Uh-oh. That's, uh... Okay, so what I was doing there was I was trying to set up the little gearbox thing, but it looks like I will be able to set up the gearbox, but I do need to turn it. Okay, stuff is going where it's supposed to. And we could probably make this a bit cleaner, but for now, I'm not too worried about it. As long as it works. But this is going to spin the wrong direction, so... Let's go ahead and hook this up in the place it's supposed to be. In the am I missing? I am missing a saw. And I picked up some more saplings. And didn't attach this like some kind of fool. Properly attach this with super glue. Break this section. Attach that. That should be good. This should be connected now. And I'm just, I have one extra sapling I can put right there. Okay, this is the scary part. Always is. But yep, okay, it's connecting and it's already gonna dump stuff out. And it's not gonna really go anywhere. Yeah, it's not gonna go anywhere just yet. And I think I need to configure this as an output. Oh, you know what? I didn't attach any sort of storage to that, so it's not storing anything. It's just spinning it in circles. So let's go slap a copper chest on top of it and not get sliced in half by the rapidly spinning death blades. 
There we go. And we can attach, or we can dump in this some of the uh, excess material that we're getting here. Uh, rubber logs, and then we need to plant these saplings that ended up getting destroyed because it didn't have a proper storage hooked up to it, so it didn't know what it was doing. Nope. Okay. Ooh, that was actually very close. And the rubber is going. Great. That's progress. Annoying progress, but still progress. Then this is going to an ejector that currently doesn't work. So I can probably just power this with a shaft. But it's going the wrong direction, so I'll put a gear shift on it. But the gear shift will also allow me to probably power this. Do I have the right size cog? I do. Oh! Ow, I forgot it does that. Okay, so there are some things we can do here to probably make this more efficient and not pull the wrong materials. But for now, it's doing what it's supposed to. It's just not the most efficient. But we're definitely getting there. And honestly, I think this is a good start. It's better than where we were at. And we're now actually producing rubber at a decent rate. It's not super insanely fast, but honestly, it doesn't need to be, because all that matters is we are producing it. Now, we'll need to do something similar to this for producing andesite, which isn't too big of a deal, but honestly, this is a start. And I think we can actually get started with the andesite stuff in the next episode, because that's going to require fluid pipes. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video and if you want to see some more. And if you have any ideas of things you want me to sort of like showcase in this mod pack, go ahead and leave a comment down below and just let me know. Also, I have some more interesting short form videos coming out soon and some videos that aren't just like Let's Plays. Yeah, we're going to do something a little different. But in the next episode, we will be doing a little bit more of this and just setting up automation of andesite but we got the warehouse built and that so i will see all of you in the next one bye bye